Hi there, and welcome to Hot Off the List. I'm Mr. Jonathan, and I'm here with Miss Michelle and our special guest. Bob Shea is an award-winning author and illustrator of some of the most beloved children's books in print today, including the Ballet Cat series, the Dinosaur Versus series, and Unicorn Thinks He's Pretty Great. Bob has worked with Comedy Central, Nick Jr., and DreamWorks, and, as, and was the designer of the PBS Kids logo. He lives with his wife and son in a yellow house with a beaver who lives in the backyard. He and his family love pizza, though Bob failed to mention on his website if the beaver likes pizza too. Today we're discussing Shea Bob, Bob's picture book, about an alligator who decides to open a restaurant for birds so that he can eat them. Hi, Bob. Hi, how are you? Wonderful. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. So congratulations on being part of the Sunshine State Young Reader Award Junior list. What does it feel like when you find out that you're going to be on a list like that? Oh, it's always great. It's just, it's a nice surprise. I, I don't, I try not to think about those things too much. I just sort of write my books. But when I it reminds me that when they leave my studio, that these books actually reach some readers and people enjoy them, <laughs> which is really nice. It was a nice honor. Wonderful. Well, we're excited to have you on the list. And what one of the things I love so much about all of Florida's lists is that the winners are always chosen by the students of Florida. So we hope that um, they will all pick up Shea Bob and uh, get reading with that. I know they're going to love it as much as we do. Thank you. Those are my favorite <laughs> ones to hear about is when the kids decide. I, I like that the best. The books are for them. Oh, so I used to work at a public library doing story times, and I found that your books lend themselves very naturally to funny voices. And I'm wondering, when you're writing them, do you hear distinct voices for your characters? You know, that's a really good question, because I've, I've heard people read my books aloud, and it's always uh, a nice surprise because I don't hear them in voices in my head. The voices are in my head are never as entertaining as what uh, a storyteller would, would do or, or someone reading to kids. Because in my head, they're all very, very dry. <laughs> they're all very, it's all very matter of fact. And it's to me, they don't have such a specific sound of their voice but they have a certain cadence that I, a certain rhythm and a certain cadence each character will have. So it's always nice when I hear someone add the, that extra layer to it. Well, that's very interesting. Well, and when, when Jonathan reads aloud, it, it, he always has lots and lots of voices. So it is, he does a wonderful read aloud. So hopefully our students will get to get a piece of Mr. Jonathan's uh, reading, reading aloud of this book. So, um, we noticed that you have a very distinct artistic style in your um, in your illustrations. How did you develop that? Uh, well, my my background is graphic design, so I gravitate towards things that are more flat colored, uh, like a poster. For people who aren't familiar with my work, and that's okay if you're not, I do very big graphic shapes. And in Shea Bob, I think I moved more towards adding some extra tone and adding some extra dimension out dimension to things but it's always big giant it's a yellow alligator and it's the birds are each a, a, a unique color but that's from my graphic design background I love that because I always feel like your books I see them on a shelf and I know before I even get too close I'm like that's a Bob Shea book so <laughs> that's great yeah I so many of, cover, oh, I'm sorry, I try to make no, the colors look like posters. It really <laughs> works because it's easy to get excited about your books because you can pick them up and immediately know who wrote them. So. Oh, good. Many of your books are about animals. And I'm wondering, yeah. do you have a favorite animal uh, that you had as a kid? You know, it's funny. I People ask me what my favorite animal is, but as you say, as one as a kid, I really like dogs. I... <laughs> I know there's a lot of other animals I could pick and I could be like, oh, I like elephants because I do. I like elephants and stuff, but mostly I like dogs. I just, I love them. I think they're just funny and sweet. And that's, and I had dogs as a kid. I'm allergic though now as a grown up, something happened and I'm allergic to dogs. So no dogs for me. No dogs oh, no. at the Shea house right now. No, no, nothing. 
I pet other people's dogs. <laughs> Well, humor seems to come very naturally to you, um, but what makes you laugh? You know, that's, no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> I, I, I laugh at very absurd, dry things that I don't think other people find particularly funny. <laughs> But I like, so in terms of kids' books, I always like the books that uh, I can tell the author had a great time writing them. The example I always use is Lori Keller, Arnie the Donut is hilarious. And I can tell when Lori was writing that, that she was just cracking herself up and drawing pictures and like, it wasn't a slog and she wasn't like, how do I get to the end of this? She just was like, having a great time and my son used to pick that for me to read to him at bedtime because I would laugh so hard that he wanted to see that see his dad crack up you know so it was a nice shared experience with us he's 18 now my son but <laughs> that was a while ago oh I love that perfect so we have a little game we'd like to invite you to play okay. given your expressed love of pizza we're going to play a game called We're Not in Brooklyn Anymore. I'll describe a regional variety of pizza, and you both will try to guess where in the world we could find a slice of it. All and right. neither of you have heard these questions before. So it's fair. <laughs> I'm getting right. serious because I'm from Chicago and I like pizza. I know. I'm excited for you. All right, you both have stake in the game. I'm going to share my screen so that while we talk about pizza, we can also look at pizza, right? All right. Here we go. Can you see the pizza? Not yet. That's uh, that was Detroit. Oh, oh no! <laughs> it is Detroit. Okay, perfect. Oh my perfect. gosh, I was going to call it Chef Boyardee <laughs> from when I was growing up. No, that's no. Detroit, and that's a not maybe not that pan, but the pans they used were from the automotive lines, were from the auto factories. You should have written this quiz because that's exactly what I have down. Is that these yeah. uh, the pans are uh, rectangles, so that uh, because they used to be auto part pans. So yep. perfect. You also notice the sauces on top. Yeah. Yeah, and it's all a, a mixture of mozzarella and cheddar cheese. Bob Shea knows his pizza. This was I'm a good saying. game to play. <laughs> All right. So pizza number one is from Detroit. Pizza number two has an unleavened cracker-like crust that is crispy and sturdy enough to be loaded with toppings. To be true to its region, it must have Prevel cheese, which is a combination of cheddar, Swiss, and provolone. Any guesses where this pizza might be? I have another hint if you need. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I've seen pizzas like okay. this, but I didn't know it was a regional. This thing. pizza pairs well with toasted ravioli. So is it from Sicily? Oh, no, it's an American pizza. Oh. And it's almost like a cracker. It, it To me, it looks it's like it's ravioli. from California for some reason. Just oh, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. But Any I've guess, got, Michelle? It's got bacon on it. Um, with cracker and ravioli, ravioli, toasted ravioli. It might be, we might be talking about New Jersey. These Down are both North. good guesses. I'm yeah. going to spoil it for you. Hey, go ahead. This is actually a St. Louis specialty. Oh, I have no. Ah. I've, I've I been to St. Louis, but I wouldn't need pizza that. when I went there. I haven't had it. Apparently you need to, because apparently it's a whole thing. And this pizza I've heard people either love it or hate it. So I find I, with I find with pizzas like that, as long as you don't assume that it's pizza, it's much more delicious. Like <laughs> that's like, the key. Oh, look, it's just round food. And then it's just <laughs> really good. You know what I mean? But if you're expecting pizza and it's and it's different than the pizza in your head, you're gonna mess it up. That's true. So one point for you guys, one point for me. I've stumped you on one. Pizza number three also known as bakery pizza. This pizza hailing from the smallest state in the country is a strip of focaccia bread with a spicy tomato sauce. Dairy lovers might be left wanting though because the bakery pizza is served without cheese. 
I know. <laughs> I've never seen it before. Bro yeah, I'm gonna go with well Rhode Island. That is the smallest, right? It is, it's Rhode okay. Island. Bob said that also. Yeah, but, but I mean, I I didn't neither, know the pizza. <laughs> neither one of us would eat this. <laughs> no, I might no. eat it as an appetizer. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that in I've seen similar in uh like Italian delis. And I, I'm from Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut yeah. right now. But at the same time, I never would call that pizza. Correct. Again. I would eat it. It is not pizza. That is a piece of bread with sauce on it. Right. It's I like, think we're getting very controversial. It. People in Rhode Island are going to be like, it's pizza. No, that is bread cool. with sauce. They'll, they'll be fine. Right. Hey, that is sauce bread. Cabinets. We're calling this sauce bread. Yeah, exactly. All right. We have two more pizzas. Uh, our fourth pizza has enough carbs to get you ready for mountain hiking. This pizza is often served with honey as a dip for the ample crust. That's, I have no, I have no guess. You're talking about mountains, is it Colorado? Ding, 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 it is Colorado, <laughs> excellent. Your, your location hints are helpful. Yeah. But this is but not, not a pizza. Photos. What, like, what is that thing? It looks I, like a rustic, uh, like fruit pie that they put cheese in. Or like an open calzone with, that exploded. It's like, I, you know, I hear about these other states and I'm like, they take this perfect thing and they're like, you know how delicious pizza is? Yeah, let's ruin it. Yeah, agreed. I'm tempted if you're going to feel that way about pizza number five, because <laughs> one of you has personal stakes in this, I think. Uh, our last pizza is a real mouthful. In fact, we doubt you'll be able to eat more than one or two slices of this stuffed pizza. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to say that looks like it very well could, based on the pan, is that from, oh, and, hmm. I think that's, that, what, I think that's the main chain place. Would that Giordano's. Be Giordano's? Yeah, it looks like Giordano's. See, I'm a Gino's, nah, I'm a Lou Malnati's girl. Oh. I'm I'm very specific about I'm a Giordano's boy every time I go to Chicago thank you so much that was very delicious to play that game with you guys so I want to know about pizza or things that people think are pizza All right <laughs> food. Yeah. Round, food I learned that, a lot about round food or square food with sauce on top All right <laughs> I would have eaten any of them though but <laughs> what is your favorite kind of pizza Mr. Shea you know, I like um, just a Neapolitan pizza, which is just a very small personal one. It's the, the crust is very uh, puffy and but crunchy and it's in a hot oven and like a 900 degree oven. It cooks very quickly and they're delicious. Very simple, just margarita pie, mm -hmm. uh, tomato sauce, cheese, basil. I make them yeah. all the time. Yum. What is your favorite, Mr. Jonathan? I'm a stuffed pizza person. I like a good stuffed Chicago style pizza. Wow. That's that's bold. And, I know. And same with you. So Michelle, I make uh, my homemade pizzas in my cast iron pan. Uh, and the whole Chicago pizza thing, I make it homemade. Um, but I also like to make my pizza on the grill. So we do like homemade pizza night at the house and the kids, everybody, you know, I'd make up the dough and then I roll it out and then we put it on the grill and uh, get it tasty, flip it over. And then everybody puts their own toppings on it. You put it oh. back on the grill and it melts the cheese. And so everybody gets their own piece of what they want. Um, but, you know, pizza, you know, there's never been a bad piece of pizza. Yeah, I'll eat any of it. Throw one at me, right? <laughs> Just like Let's Bob see. Shea's book. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you have not read this, it is, to me, the funniest book on the Sunshine State list this year. Lots of those books tug at your heartstrings. This one tugs at your funny bone. It is so silly. And then at the end, I was like, oh, no, am I tearing up? Is it sweet? What's happening? So thank you so much for the wonderful books you've written over the years. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. That was really fun. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.